Well, good afternoon and evening, everyone. It's Terra Quator. <laughs> Excuse me, my allergies, as soon as I started, you know, the whole starting all this up, my allergies began acting up, so I'm a little sniffly at the moment. It's like a cat sat on my headset, but I know that's that should be the case. Anyway, this is Terra Quator. Well, it's, it's Thursday. It's Thursday, October... It's only the 24th? Oh, yeah, duh. It's uh, it's uh, Thursday. Favorite day of the week, October 24th, 2024. Day 298. We're going to rent. And why do I know that without having to double check this time, having a greater moniker of, of confidence in knowing that it's the day 298? Is that day after tomorrow, or Saturday, is day 300. Very... I need to change the thumbs up expression on this avatar. I really do. Anyway, but because of that, I'm excited. I am significantly excited and nervous. Pardon me. I got to <laughs> chortle again. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. But allergies are I, they, out of nowhere. I, I took my size all today. I'm worried it's losing its effectiveness. Is that the, <laughs> if that is the case, we have a problem. Which would be cat no longer... Well, I should already be enforcing the rule of don't let the cat in the house, but... How could I say no to the kids? How, how could I say no to them? That, that's, the, that's the hard part about this whole thing, is I know I really like cats. I know what the, what the rules are for our lease agreement. Luckily, it's not our cat. It's the neighbor's cat, so the cat doesn't live here. He just comes in and tries to steal food. But how could I say no to my kids who re they, they really want a pet, but I, I, I can't give them a pet because our lease agreement says no pets. Which means I need to find the means of making enough to just get our own, our own house in a non-HOA neighborhood. I will never, ever live in an HOA. No way. Or homeowners association for those who don't know all the acronyms. I will never live in a place that has a homeowners association running things. I want to be able to live by my own rules under my own roof in my own yard. I understand there are a degree of rules when it comes to the city, but if they try to pull in an HOA and it's like, you are now under an HOA, I'll say, yeah, no, I'm not. I didn't sign, I didn't sign that. And I will not be part of your HOA. I was here first, is what I will say. So, yeah, I just really, really hate HOAs. They're they they just go around looking for trouble. That's all. I, that's all you ever see are people who have experiences where their HOA man, you know, their their enforcers just go around looking for trouble. They're, they're jerks. Sorry. Uh, this this controller right here is a bit a little bit wonky when it comes to the. Uh, expressions it tries to do other ones when I try to do another so at least I was able to get that one but it tried to give you that one again <laughs> but there I'd say there isn't a whole lot going on today but there's less than there was supposed to because we had buttercup stay home from school because well she could have had a half day being but she was supposed to have a dentist appointment today and then that we were going to deal with doctors in Oklahoma City. So she wasn't going to be able to go to school today. She could have gone for the first half because apparently the whole schedule got mixed up where apparently she was supposed to be at the dentist at 9 o'clock. Like her appointment was at 9 o'clock when they originally told us it was at 1030. Yeah, we, we missed that appointment. We had to re... Because of that mishap and we called at 8 55 in the morning um we managed to call them and we rescheduled for next week at 10 o'clock so that's scheduled well the thing is though it's going to be very very awkward when we have to call her school again on the 30th of october and like oh yeah she's going to be missing the first half of school for a dentist appointment They're like well why was what happened last week <sighs> scheduling issues that's what happened. I I am not thrilled with that kind of thing. It's like nine sharp. And then they when they tried to reschedule, like, oh yeah, how about eight o'clock? What what medical anything opens at eight o'clock in the morning? That's new to me. 
the earliest I've ever seen anything medical, whether a dentist or a doctor, open up at like 9, 9.30 at the earliest. Eight? Zero eight in the morning? No, thank you. No. That's just too early. That's just, you know, just piling on more issues than are necessary, you know? <laughs> Excuse me. And yes, for right now, we're we're in the we're in the great pub. I miscalculated something. I I, 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 I was just you know doom scrolling on X and saw that they said mentioned something about the pug in their Halloween event. It's like, oh hey, maybe I'll go there today, check it out, kind of thing. Uh, how wrong I was. It was not today. It starts tomorrow, or October. No no no, not tomorrow. Saturday, October. Wow, interesting. It starts on October 26th. And what, what does it say? In fact, they, they have it up they have it up here. Hang on. Alright. Come with me and you'll see what they say. Alright, so if you want to do anything in VR chat on Saturday, October 26th, it just says 8th annual uh 8th annual Halloween at the Pug, October 26th, 7 p.m. Pacific time. And yes, that, that that's Pacific time, PT. So that would mean it's at 9 p.m. local for me. Because at the time of recording, for me right now, of course, um, it is, let me, let me take a look here. It's uh, 5.18 p.m., which means as of right now, at the time of recording is 3.18 p.m. in Pacific time, because we're central. But, so if you want to do anything on Saturday the 26th, at 7 p.m. Pacific time, go to the Great Pub, apparently. And apparently I should have looked at all the details before coming in here. I used to be really good at looking at details on things. I used to be really good at looking at those so I don't miss anything, especially when it came to like terms of service kind of stuff. Yet that I missed because I doom scrolling my attention spans, I guess. Which, speaking of when it comes to attention span stuff, I know I haven't been doing any shorts for a while, but a lot of that is because there's been too much on my mind to bother dealing with the short and... Believe it or not, people like me struggle with doing short form content because it's like, how do you pack enough in within a 60 second time frame? And it's like, oh, you can do, a, you get a little more time. I think they said up to two minutes on TikTok. No, I am never getting TikTok. No, absolutely not. They're funded by the Chinese Communist Party. And I'm, well, honestly, I'd probably be preemptively banned on there anyway because I am highly critical of the Communist Party. So I'm not, I'm not going to bother with that. But I've been giving it some thought and I do not think I will be doing shorts anymore. I've been looking through, especially among uh, parental groups and uh, overall, like teachers groups and parental groups through the issues of ever diminishing attention spans of young, you know, children, students, and youth ever diminishing attention spans. And a lot of it, as they observe is through this short form content that's being pushed ever, ever harder. Cause I know at some point, if, if, if my channel grows, YouTube's going to say, Hey, we want you to be doing shorts. Well, YouTube, I've done shorts before. I don't like the format. I pref especially since I don't like the 9x16 format. I like the 16x9 format, which is what you're seeing right now. On top of that, I do not like short form content. And a big reason for that is when I start sc scrolling because what, I, what really, really bugs me is not only on my phone, but now on my computer. Because what's, what's kind of cool for me is that every single device my account, my YouTube account is on, which is my phone, computer, and our TV. Every one of those, somehow, even though it's the same account, has a different algorithm. My phone has an algorithm, which is uh, unfortunately mostly news. Ugh. News and uh, surprisingly VTubers. Indie VTubers. Uh, like, just, just a few of them, though. They've been trying to push more of them to me, but... I, 
one thing I really need. Okay, let me let me get to it before I, you know, get too distracted. You know, big reason why I don't like short form content. It's right there is, especially on my phone, because you just grab it and look at it when you're doing anything. More and more, YouTube keeps trying to push. Um, whether it's on my subscriptions list or on my on the main page, more and more of it is being replaced with shorts thumbnails instead of, you know, regular videos. So the more that the, they're pushing it really, really hard. And again, I, I, it's not because of engagement. They just want people watching it. And that's and that's what it, it, shorts are designed for people to start doom scrolling. And the doom scrolling is what is ever decreasing attention span for adults, youth, and children. And what I can tell you is in this household, um, Lily has it, but I do not let her. Uh, she has her own TikTok, but that's because she really likes the Hoyoverse uh, creators. She likes Hoyoverse uh, community creators. I'll. It's, it's messy right now for a whole heap of different reasons. One of the most toxic gaming communities I've ever seen in my life is Hoyoverse. Mostly Genshin, but my god, they're toxic. Whole different story, but when she's looking through TikTok, I don't want her letting the children watch them as well. Because they, they have YouTube kids, and I still monitor what's on the YouTube kids. There's no YouTube regular old YouTube on their tablet, just YouTube kids, and I have full monitoring capacity and say so on what happens. That's me trying to be a responsible parent to make sure that their uh, that their attention spans and their overall well-being are maintained. It's, it, it's a difficult balance because I want them to have a degree of freedom, but I also don't want them rabbit holing like... Uh, like a lot of other kids do, because I know a lot of Buttercup's classmates, apparently we hear they do a lot of TikTok stuff. They try to follow the trends and the challenges. Like, yo, you're all 9 and 10. You don't need to do a TikTok challenge. You're 9 and 10 years old. Hence, the old saying of, if your friends jumped off a bridge, would you follow them? It's like, just because your friends are on TikTok and their attention spans are diminishing doesn't mean you should do it too. Last year, we took the tablet away in general because she was just doing games in her tablet and it was distracting her from schoolwork, which is why she's not allowed to play games or use her tablet on school days and school nights because I want her to be able to focus. And as a result, she has among the highest grades in her class right now. So the, 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 the numbers and the results speak for themselves. Her attention span even though Buttercup struggles with her attention span, is higher than her classmates. And I, I, I want to argue that it's because she doesn't have a phone to just be on all the time. She's not allowed to use her tablet during the school week. TikTok is absolutely banned in the household. So on principle, getting back to what I was talking about with YouTube and YouTube Shorts, I personally do not want to be contributing to the diminishing attention spans of our young adults, teens, you know, our, our youth, students, and children. I do not want to be contributing to their diminishing attention spans. I understand. I mean, look at me. I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a VR chat avatar right now. Of course, of course, I am. So, why, why am I sitting there talking about diminishing attention spans? It's not, it's not the subst. Well, Okay, yes, there is a degree of substance of the content, but that's also why I'm not. Tr I, I'm trying to move. When, when it, we'll, we'll eventually get to trying to do more creative things with the channel, but right now, I'm not in that phase. Right now is keeping focus on my primary project because I do not want to slip up. I'm 298 days sober, which means I'm two days, two days away from making day 300. And that means after once I hit day 300, I'll have two months to make it to the end of the year to have finally said to myself, I have proven I can see something through. I gave myself a goal I and I saw it to the end. And that's something I struggle with, has have struggled with for a long time is I've gotten used to failure. 
I've gotten extremely used to failure. Failure as a friend, uh, failure in the workforce. Well, I feel that way, but there are whole different other circumstances. Let's not get into that. But I feel personally like I've gotten accustomed to failure. So, focusing on this project of I record every day my uh, journey of going a full year sober, that's my focus right now. Next year, I would like to add more creative subjects and maybe some more serious subjects to whether I'm in VR chat, VTuber, or in front of a camera. I want to tr think of doing a few more creative things just so I can have some fun with it, aside from just focusing on this goal, because once we get to next year, this goal has been met. But I will not be contributing through shorts. If this grows and YouTube starts pushing and saying you need to do shorts, I will tell them uh, to shove it. I'll tell them to shove it because I am not contributing to that. I do believe that there needs to be some some degree of regulation of short of short form content because there's too much, and all algorithms, even even on YouTube, which has long form content. All of the major platforms are pushing short form content algorithmic, al algorithmically for people to just scroll and stay on there. And what has all, and you know, other creators who started out long ago and created communities saw their communities diminish. They, their views stayed good, but their community engagement d diminished as well because short form content doesn't exactly encourage community engagement. Which, which, you know, some degree it's okay, because, well, Tessa and I have already talked about the fact we really, really do not like parasocial relationships on the internet. We really don't. I can't stand them. And, of course, I have my reasons. The big one, the big one I will repeat, was um, back in, I'm trying to remember if it was 20, late 2019 or 2020, I think it was 2020. Because this is this was around the time that we were slowing down, for multiple reasons. Uh, one of the biggest reasons, obviously, we slowed down because we were streaming at a point, and we'd shot ourselves in the foot for that. Because 2019, when I started streaming, was also when I knew that we were, I was not going to pass the CompTIA A plus course. I wasn't going to pass the certification. A lot of that because the school I was going to completely cut communications with me and said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah you're on your own." So uh, if you're if you're looking, don't go to New Horizons. Sorry, but my experience was with them was, if you're not right there with them, and you're not already with prior experience, the likelihood is you're not going to pass. They're not going to be very helpful. And if you start to struggle, they will cut communications and pretty much to leave you on your own. So if you're looking to get an A plus certification, don't go to New Horizons. Anyway. During that time, I was like, okay, I'll try streaming because I finally had gotten a hold of the old HTC Vive and a computer that could handle it. Of course, it was a laptop at the time. So I started streaming, and we actually did really, really well in the... Uh, first, we actually made uh, affiliate in a week on Twitch. We, we made it to affiliate in a week, but we stagnated very rapidly after that. And the biggest reason is... During that same time, I said, okay, if I'm going to start streaming, I'm going to go sober. Well, we made the mistake of celebrating our feat of making affiliate and giving ourselves the opportunity to start generating some revenue from this to keep it going and try to stabilize our lives. I made the mistake of celebrating with, well, drinking. And uh, streaming became less and less frequent, less and less consistent, and... There, there is something in socially that I deal with to this day, and a lot of it revolved around drinking. Because socializing in VR chat, I relied on alcohol too much, so I became your uh, al almost your stereotypical VR chat a alcoholic, where I was drinking all the time, but I wasn't, you know, like doing shots. I, I only drink, I only drink beer. I like my beer. Sorry, but you know, typical Merc or something. I don't know. I, I prefer drinking beer, and, you know, I could have it a little slower without getting completely schnockered. But I used it to socialize, so when I was sober, my ability to socialize, especially when, like, dealing with withdrawals, sucked. To the point where I just stopped streaming overall, 
I, I didn't like the interactions uh, with people while I was in a game. Not, not like the people chatting, but, you know, that kind of stuff can happen. You, you get heckled. It happens. But no, one thing that really stood out for me for my talking about not liking parasocial relationships is one person in particular who, especially if I was in VR chat, would always go to a world I was in, demand attention from us, like myself or Lilia, and they started getting upset that I was in VR chat less and less. And I was like, look, I got a family to take care of. And they, they were something, someone who was trying to, you know, establish some kind of parasocial relationship thing with us. Where, like, I, I do not like, it's like, oh, yeah, you're so cool, you're so cool. And then you follow me everywhere. I don't like that. I get uncomfortable. And a lot of it is... Um, I've had the luxury of having a personal life for a very long time. My personal life is, and my family life is much more important to me than what I'm doing even here. I'm doing this just so I can see this through. But back then, I, I'm trying to remember... Uh, yeah, th no, this this was too... Uh, mid-2020. I'd say it was mid-2020 because Sweet Pea wasn't born yet. We were still doing VR chat streaming. A little here and there but you know I hadn't exactly stopped sweet but sweet pea wasn't born yet but I do know it, it was around the time where it was reducing and if I remember we were also trying I, I was trying to stop drinking and uh, let's just say 2020 was um, 20 no, no, 2021 is when, <laughs> when it was uh, hard 2020 was all was already hard, but no, it was uh, 2021. I apologize, but if you, if, if I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, we all remember 2020 and 2021. It all felt like one terrible, terrible year. It, it, it we all know that it sucked. I'm just glad I was in Oklahoma for all of that. <laughs> but no, um, what happened? I was in VR chat late night. So yes, it was 2021 because. Uh, Lily was pregnant with uh, Sweet Pea. But it wasn't early in the year because we were still kind of streaming off and on. But uh, th this event is where I just kind of told myself, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Was this person, after telling them, look, I have a family to take care of. I want to spend time with them, keep them happy, and keep them entertained, and take care of their needs. They come before, you know, friends in VR chat. And he looked me dead in the, well, VR dead in the eye and said, you're lucky you have a family and actually started getting upset and aggressive with me. So that's when I just logged out and I stayed out of VR chat for about six months. And that that's where I kind of came to the conclusion. I really, really hate parasocial relations. I have a family. I have children. I have a wife. I have a life. Holy crud. I have a life. <laughs> I don't know. That's a hard one to say because most of my life is just here at home. I'm disabled. I don't like talking about it. But that was that was the moment that told me that streaming just isn't for me. I, I, I do like making videos. I do. I do. Even if I'm just here talking. But I really, really don't want to do politics. I really don't. I know a lot of people. I, I already watch plenty of it. And I don't want to... Like, I, I've had the temptation because it looks like it's something you just do. But I don't care if in some degree, content-wise, it's easy. I don't like being angry. And we already know anger is a very addicting emotion. And all for the wrong reasons, of course. We, we're aware of this. But, again... I realized, you know, let me get myself, you know, straightened out. It, it, it was after Sweet Pea was born. I mean, think, it, it's been three years since then. It's been over three years since that event happened. But after Sweet Pea was born, it's, which has also been three years since then, it took a long time to really straighten myself out because I was already in that downward spiral because of, as a result of, the mistake I made in 2019 of celebrating through drinking for hitting affiliate on Twitch and from there of 
using it to social, you know, using alcohol to socialize and that downward spiral. The pandemic hit, which meant ev everyone I knew who was of age were all drinking anyway. What else could you do? It, it was difficult, but it caused a severe downward spiral. And then at the same time, our budget started tightening up because, well, 2021, 2022, 2023, and 2024, all we saw were prices going up, 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 to where we can barely afford food at this point. But by, I want to say, really the la like the last straw of, the, uh, this has to stop for me kind of thing with the with the drinking and the with spending too much time in withdrawal stage and being lethargic and hating myself it started i want to say probably like june july of last year of um 2023 is when i finally hit that point it's like this this has to stop so of course i go th i i struggled with it because we're still in that phase, but uh, I'd say it was around. Uh, I, I'd, I'd argue it was around this t this exact time last year. No, no, it was at the beginning of October. At the at the latest, the beginning of October of last year is when I was setting the groundworks of a, a, a no more drinking. But. Of course, I picked the beginning of 2024. I, I, I picked the beginning of the year, not because of New Year's resolutions. A lot of people will, will, will want to assume that's why I chose the time to, of then to do the whole try to stop drinking, because it, it's stereotypical. How many people have I known, beer in hand, I'm going to stop drinking this year. Well, well they're still drinking. <laughs> I've seen plenty of that, and believe it or not, I've done that before. I have. Pardon me, I have to adjust my trackers. They, I, I think I need to tighten up my foot trackers. They uh, kind of on me, make me look like I'm running around doing the pee pee dance or something. But anyway, I've seen people do that. But I, I chose that time not for the resolution por portion, but the it's easier to keep track of portion. <laughs> it's easier to keep track of how long I've gone because it's a very recognizable day of when I officially stopped, which was the 1st of January. The, morn the morning of January this year, I was... Oh man, I was so hungover. Go look at day one. Day one of this challenge, which is which is on the, the, the daily vlog journey, I guess, playlist. Go there, look at day one. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, under my eyes was red. Like dark circle kind of red. And I sounded lethargic. I did that video that night trying to remember if it was eight or nine o'clock it sucked i was sick i was I, I felt very sick i did not enjoy doing it but i said i had to do it because that was part of the challenge so i did but i'm glad it's out of the way but again moving back and forth because my, my conversations are going to go all over the place right now that's that. That's my fault. That, my, my brain kind of goes everywhere. Kind of reminds me of Billy Conway. But that's why I chose January first. And uh, let's see, Jan January first. Um, the not streaming anymore. Again, the two reasons were alcohol destroyed it. My consistency was so bad. I'm still affiliate because apparently I still have 503 followers on Twitch. Which is really weird, but the other side of it being, of course, I didn't, I didn't like the parasocial side of it, and knowing that I'm not streaming, like, most of the time I streamed after the week of making it to affiliate in 2019, 
I, I was almost always drinking on nights I was streaming, and I, I can't do that anymore. In fact, if you look at the TOS on Twitch for, for streaming content, you are not supposed to be streaming while inebriated on any substances. Just keep that in mind, drinkers. I be it like I believe alcohol is included in that, and honestly, it's just it's just smart to not do that. So, if I ever go back to it, I need to get used to the to talking to people sober, because I'm really not used to it. In fact, uh, Tessa and I both tried to go into a public world after one of these recordings this week to try talking with people, and we realized we we. We, we really struggled with that. It's incredibly difficult for us to socialize. And I do not know when or how to get that fixed up for, for ourselves. Because well, I, I've always struggled socializing with people. It's always been a struggle. I guess that's why this kind of video content like you see right now is easier for us. Because we have a little more time to think. And if someone says something in the comments or we get a question elsewhere, I can address it at my leisure. Pardon me for being selfish and... Mm, privileged? No, no, not privileged. It's it's more I have the opportunity to take my time on, on giving responses to things. Rather than, there it is on my screen, you better respond right now because you're small. Or... You know, someone going into a, a pub, like a world that you're in, if you're in like VR chat and just in your face, hey, say something. It's like, who are you? I have got, I did get that before. I have had people show up as like, uh, who are you? Not even on my friend list or anything. It's, it's happened, but it doesn't happen anymore. But again, I don't stream. Uh, the biggest part or the biggest content thing is I'm not doing, I will not. I don't ever want to do a short again. I, I don't want to contribute to that for, for kids. I don't want my kids watching short shorts. I don't want them watching short form content. I don't want them doom scrolling. I need to keep their attention span in a solid place. And I need to make sure that their education goes in a positive direction. I don't want my kids to grow up and experience what myself and Lilia dealt with. I don't want them to grow up and have that challenge because uh, this is this is no life you want to live. You, it's, it's really not. So I want them to have a good education, a good attention span, and a good idea of how to interact with people in the world outside of doom scrolling on a phone. And again, that's also why I still haven't gotten Buttercup her own cell phone. I mean, she's 10. I, I personally do not think a 10-year-old needs a cell phone. That's too young. Yet, apparently, she she has told me that she gets bullied at school because she she tells me she's the only person in her fourth grade class that doesn't have a cell phone. They've all had cell phones since kindergarten. I'm really not okay with that. I'm not okay with kids having cell phones. Like, you're, you're not even a teenager. Why do you have a cell phone? It's not necessary. And yet... I'd say there's there is a societal pressure to get her a cell phone because even her grandparents are pressuring us to get her a cell phone. She's not in a situation to even require one other than she's at school. But when they're at school, they're required to turn them off and put them in their backpack or they get confiscated, which is how it should be. You're in elementary school. You're in the fourth grade. You don't need a cell phone. But... She deals with the social pressure from her classmates and her grandparents who, um, well, Lily's side of the family is, it's much more, <clears throat> excuse me, much more consumer based than I am where if everyone has this, well, maybe you should have it too. I did all these things when I was a kid cause we had the opportunity. Therefore they should too. It's like we have, we have to work within our means and cell phones aren't cheap. Especially since the things they want to do on the phones is like Lily too. Like, oh man, I'm struggling with that. I need to find a way to get her a new phone because her phone is old. Different story, different concern. Not here. Well, time and place. But Buttercup does not need a, like I of uh, of I 
Grammar, please. I am of the opinion that Buttercup is too young for a cell phone. She's 10. My first cell phone, I was... I was 14. I was, I was, I was about 14 years old. And yeah, this was the early days of cell phones, okay? This was when they still had those metallic gray flip phones with the green back LCD screens the you know the old ones it doesn't mean like the old Sony Ericsson brick not like that but it still had still the earlier days the flip phones still had the green back LCD because not many of them were backlit backlighting in cell phones wasn't commonplace until I want to say 2004, 2005, 2004, 2005 was around the time that well backlit LCD screens showed up on, on cell phones. But remember, this is still this is still pre smartphone. But a lot of my classmates had cell phones too. Not a not all of them, because it was still relatively new. And back then, oh my goodness, back then cell phone plans were expensive. You think it's expensive now? <laughs> uh -uh. You got uh, could easily get charged by the minute. In fact, my cell phone plan. Um, I if I remember, I'm trying to remember. I I'm gonna say it was Metro. The old Metro PCS bought the cell phone company out that I was under at that time. But I don't remember the. Was it Sure West? Yeah, I think it was Sure West. Was my the first cell phone provider I had they don't exist anymore I, I want to say they were bought out by either T-Mobile or Metro but I believe well then again Metro was also bought out by T-Mobile wasn't it huh anyway um but the sure West plan it had it had some unlimited but I'm trying to remember I'm trying to remember if the unlimited time it, it had two criteria two criteria for it it was either the unlimited minutes no the unlimited minutes were for before 7 p.m. local time on top of that the plan we had for me was still like i think it was still like $80 a month back then remember i said cell phone plans back then were very expensive because this is also before they transitioned also cell phone towers to digital only this is before that that's how old it was. And, and even then, like, uh, all, all digital cell phone towers uh, didn't really kick off until about 2007. So, it was a short span of time because, you know... But anyway, um, on top of that, I was only allowed to call my local area code. All other area codes, it wasn't like you pay a fee for it. It was hard-locked. You couldn't call any other area codes i couldn't call my grandmother <laughs> i couldn't even call her and she well she lived in another county with think counties in california are pretty close together well we know how people in california are used to driving everywhere anyway so that's a whole different thing but it was your local area code only and your unlimited hours ended at 7 p.m in fact, I believe when I fir the first six months I had it, I wasn't like the unlimited was there, but you could also set it up be with parental controls that after a certain hour, your phone got hard locked. Well, not hard locked, but data services got locked out where <clears throat> you couldn't send messages or make calls. And back then you had a limited number of t SMS messages. Uh, I was limited to 200 a month. And back then, that was a lot. <laughs> back then, that was a lot. My brother went over that a lot. And quite often. I didn't. I, I didn't text people very often. I didn't call people very often. But I was more of a computer guy anyway. But back then, it was extremely expensive and extremely limited. But of course, the, first, the, the the earlier, earlier days of cell phones were even worse. They charged like, what was it like? Even at that time, not adjusted for inflation, at that time was like a dollar or two dollars a minute to use your cell phone local. But that that was in the day of the uh, the Sony Ericsson uh, solid brick, no flip phone. 
whole different thing. That's actually my early childhood. It was really rare to see those. But moving back, knowing how my experience was, knowing that I was 14 when I got my first and it was highly regulated, and that was a very good thing that it was. I had the experience of a time where parents were much more involved with ensuring their kids weren't doing things they really shouldn't do at their age bracket on the internet. Like, who, who remembers um, cybersecurity? And I don't mean the, the profession. There, uh, I'm trying to remember. There was a parental control system called, like, Cybersecurity 2000 or something like that. It's an old, it's an old system. Cybersecurity wasn't exactly a an antivirus program. It was mostly a parental system to block other users on your home network from going to certain websites and could monitor webs what websites are being visited. So anything on the list that's unapproved would alert the uh, the admin computer. So anytime I accidentally bypassed like got to a website that was unapproved but not you know hard blocked it would it would send like hey this computer went to this url but there were a ton of things i in those early days my father wouldn't even let me use google that's how bad it, that's how bad it was like it would like this is back when search engines a lot of search engines were blocked in these kind of programs but I did grow up in that time. Obviously, he, he loosened up where cybersecurity stopped being used. Um, he, I was using cybersecurity from only for a couple of years. I want to say it was like 1999 through 2001 is when he used it. So by 2001, when I got my own computer, we weren't using it anymore. Besides, in the early, in the early days of the Windows XP, I mostly used the... Um, what was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. What was it like? Not astronaut. It was like Space Cadet Pinball. That was fun. But anyway, I've wow, I've really been at this. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah. Moving back, moving back to the final bit. I'm still of the opinion Buttercup's too young for a cell phone. She hasn't shown the level of self control necessary for mobile phone usage. And the responsibilities that come with it as a uh, a youth. But I do know that time's coming up really soon because I keep bumping ag against the rest of her family being my wife who th who thinks she needs one. I don't know. I, I like why does she need? I don't know. Like she's not in a position to even need one right now. She's she she'll, she's getting there soon, but I still think she's got at least another year before really needing it. And her grandparents are saying, you better get her one. So I'm dealing with that pressure too. And believe me, I do not like arguing with my in-laws all the time. My parents or, you know, my side of the family, my, my parents are of the opinion she's too young. Like, think about how it was when I grew up. And I understand that. I, I didn't get one until, again, I was 14. That... that Again, I think worked out in my favor. Fa favor? Favor. I think it worked out in my favor. I, I did it again. I think it worked out in my favor because it taught me a degree of social responsibility. Not a lot because be, by my goodness, when I still had the opportunity, I was still a degenerate. I was still a degenerate as a teenager. <clears throat> it's something to be expected with teenagers teenagers are gonna teenage i i just like back then in the especially like the early days of yahoo messenger i still had the opportunity of experiences where adults in a chat room would still say hey wait a minute you're you're a kid or you know you're a, you're a young teenager you need to leave because they're like oh we're gonna be doing things that you shouldn't be looking at so they they you know boot me from a chat room there was still that level of social respect i suppose but again i still did quite a few things on the internet as a young teenager and teenager that were very obviously inappropriate 
uh, looking at inappropriate things. I mean, LimeWire was a thing. But... There was, I guess I could say there was less of it and it was less available because uh, social media wasn't totally a thing. The more, more chat rooms were a thing. This is when you still had AOL, Yahoo, and like MSN Messenger. IMVU was kind of there, but it, it didn't. It, its beta was in 2004. Was it 2004? I'm trying to no, that's when no, that's when IMVU launched. Its beta was 2002. I remember that. It was early 2002 was was IMVU's beta. I remember that beta. You'd write like slash kick and it'd go hi ya or something. It was it was it was silly. But anyway, that that's that's a whole other thing. I was still a degenerate. I, I, my level of degeneracy to make sure because my dad was well, he's a tech. My dad's a tech guy. He's a lean six sigma. Tech people will understand exactly what I said there because that's a, that's a computer thing. But he also understood cybersecurity. And I don't mean the program. Well, he understood that too because it was on the computers for a while. But I reached the point where when selectively removing browser history because it's, po it, what? it's possible to do that. It's just a, a pain in the butt to do. But I also... Code worded and encrypted folders that had files I didn't want him to see. Obviously, it's not necessary for me to do that anymore because I'm. I just feel too tired to even. Well, not even too tired. I'm too old. Too old to bother with degen content these days. But as a teenager, I did those things. I expect these things to happen, and it's still going to be my responsibility when they pop up. To make sure my kids are safe and disciplined appro appropriately for when they break tr break my trust kind of thing you know it, it's it's a difficult balance it is a very difficult balance with that but that's the big thing about being a parent of your children whom they're not going to start growing <clears throat> even when i die they're still going to be growing they'll be they'll be growing old if once i die but yeah, I don't. I don't even look at death the same way anymore. It's a whole other thing. It's not like it's. It's not like the whole. You know, if, if you're thinking about, you know, this call this hotline. It's more that, hey, I'm not getting any younger. I need to start preparing for the future to make sure my kids are well off for when I'm no longer here. And I'm only thirty. I mean, I understand. I'm only thirty-six years old, but they. I know cancer rates are up. My health is very subpar. I need to get my health. I'm trying to get my health in order because I'm aware of these things. I'm not getting any older or no, that'd be weird. No, I'm not getting any younger. I'm only getting older and I'm in, I'm in the stage of life where taking care of my health is so paramount that if I don't, the big problems will crop up all that much easier. And I lost my mother to cancer. She had it three times. And she took care of herself. She tried very hard to take care of herself. So I need to take care of myself. I need to get my health in order. I need to start being more active. And by, by golly, being more active for me is a lot harder than it looks because I still struggle with my right hip. I, I can't run anymore. Every time I try to move my leg, especially my right leg at the... Uh, velocity of trying to get to a jog or a sprint i just immediately fall over my hip can't take it and that's because of the hip surgery i had in 2017 whole different story i've been over it before but it makes it that much harder to get my health in order i can't go to a gym because they're too far away and we don't own a car so i'm just trying to get my health in order here at home i want to take care of myself so i can healthily watch my children grow up and determine how how their adulthood early adulthood is going to go am i going to be a grandparent will that one day happen oh, of course I, I i am at minimum 10 years away from that at minimum 10 years of, oh no i hope lily didn't hear that <laughs> at minimum 10 years um i was 25 
when we had when we had Buttercup. I was 25. Because if you no, that doesn't sound right. I was 26. My apologies. Just getting. Th- I just remember. Oh, that's why I get so mixed up. I was 25 when when Lily got pregnant with Buttercup. That's why I get so mixed up because so many major things happened in that tiny little window. But I had just turned 26 when Buttercup was born. And oddly enough, that is the exact same age my father was when he had me. That's the same age. It's kind of funny. But that does mean um, with Lilia, she was the same age as my dad when my dad had my older brother. So there's that. But what can... I mean... I, I'm 36 years old now. My, my daughter's my, my, my daughter's 10. So if she follows the same track, then I'd have 15 years of breathing room. The thing is that I, that I have to remember is that since Buttercup's been born, the the uh, perception of time. It's only sp- it's only sped up. It- it's not slowing down. It's only speeding up. This year, this this year with the sober challenge, I thought was gonna like drag on. It has not. It is not dragged on. It's it's really picked up this year. Ha- only feel like the perception of it only feels like it's been four five months compared to what five months felt like three years ago it's excuse me it's gone by or felt like it's gone by a lot faster than i'm used to and if that's the case now and they say time only speeds up as you get older well i'm not getting any younger and what worries me is not being prepared well i'll i'll never be prepared but not being prepared enough no that still doesn't sound right what worries me is being totally unprepared for when my kids become adults i want to be any level of degree of prepared i don't want to be totally unprepared that's what i'm trying to say it's a difficult thing to say because you realize she has Eight years. She has eight years of school left. And her ten years of growing have been incredibly fast. Ever since moving back to Oklahoma in 2018, things have only sped up and up and up and up. Like, the pace is... For us, especially of our health situation, has been almost unmanageable. So I really want to get my health in order because I, I, I'm in the like as a as a millennial male. I I'm technically ba- based on current average lifespans of males in the United States. I'm middle aged now. I can't even say I'm an adult. I'm not a young adult. Based on current trends, I could be considered middle-aged now. I mean, we we consider middle-aged at 40, but, well, unfortunately, men my age and slightly older, our average lifespan is now like, what, 70, 72? If it's 72, I'm over the hill now. Based on averages, I'm over the hill now. It's kind of a scary prospect when you think about it that way. That I've had a lot to talk about today, a lot of kind of revelations kind of thing. But I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing things right for my kids. I want to get my health in order. I want to get my I want to see this project through to say, hey, I've seen this through. Can I put it on a resume? I have no idea. That'd be kind of cool if I could. It's like, I saw this project through. I said I'd do this every single day. Here I am. If that works, it works. I don't think it will. But 
Man, I went on a lot of rants today. And I still need to make dinner. Whoops. <laughs> but, yeah. And what I can say... Don't take it as a down note. Like, I cannot take any of these things as, neg as negative at all. Lilia might. Lilia might, but she has her own reasons. I mean, she's... She's not me. For me... I have enjoyed every moment I have enjoyed every moment of watching my children grow and what personalities they have buttercup's personality is quite similar to her mother which scares me sweet peas personality is much more like mine which really scares the crap out of me <laughs> she has a ton of energy for a three-year-old Luckily, she hasn't done what I did as a toddler. We keep a very close eye on her for those reasons. She hasn't put any kidney beans up her nose. And yes, that's why I don't like kidney beans. Because when I was about, uh, I'd say about a year younger than Sweet Pea, I shoved five uh, dry kidney beans up my nose and they all swelled up and I had to have them medically removed. There you go. I don't like kidney beans. But... She hasn't done any of that. She hasn't busted her face open like her sister did on my old computer when we lived in California, so that's good. Buttercup tripped and fell. First thing her face hit was my old computer, so that's what I mean. And her face busted open the exact same way mine did when I was Buttercup's age when she had that injury, only I was on a bicycle and, and uh, fell off and my face hit a parked car. But her face is busted open the exact same way. <laughs> so there hasn't been any of that but my goodness she's a uh, sweepy's a troublemaker she's got a ton a ton of energy and she she did something recently uh in terms of speech like verbally she she said something i'm trying to remember what because it was it was lilia who heard more of it but maybe maybe i'll talk about all of those antics another time because I, I, I've dragged this on more than long enough. So I apologize for this long rant. I'm I'm going to have to put uh, segment cuts in there. So the edit for this is probably going to take longer. So I apologize for that. It means you can skip around wherever you want. But please, everyone, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. I'm going to continue to see this project through. I look forward to seeing all of you. I look forward to seeing all of you on, uh, well... Uh, come on. Oh, sorry. I took a picture. I didn't mean to. I didn't even mean to grab this camera, but I did. But I do look forward to seeing all of you on Saturday IRL. Um, I'm not going to stream it. I will not be streaming. So tomorrow, hopefully, if I can borrow my in-laws weed whacker, because again, ours was stolen. I can get the yard cleaned up so I can do an IRL, not live stream, just... <laughs> Excuse me, an IRL video. I uh, might use the 360 camera because the microphone on it is of better quality than the one on my phone. My phone needs to get worked on. I need to take it to a mobile phone repair shop just to get the adhesive on the back plate reapplied. Because Samsung, your adhesive is terrible. It's German, isn't it? If you're curious, I really do not like German adhesives. It's a historical thing. The Germans have been terrible with, with tape and adhesives. Their glue sucks. Don't, don't go German. Go Japanese. Go American. Maybe South Korean. But German? No. Don't, don't do German adhesives. You go American. Whole different thing. It's a historical thing. Anyway, I look forward to seeing everyone on, on Saturday. Day 300. October twenty, October twenty sixth, the same day that Halloween thing happens here in the Great Pug at seven p.m. Before it starts, of course, I'll have taken on the Toe of Satan challenge. Same day, but I I, I look forward to um I look forward to the challenge, but I am, I I am admittedly nervous about it. I've taken on other challenges. I've taken on the Apollo sauce. From uh, the hedonist, you know, the first we feast guys. 
who do the Hot Ones Challenge. I've done their Apollo sauce. I've done their original Last Dab. And I've also done their um, their newer one, the Experience Sauce, which, by the way, I love the Experience Sauce. Not a ton of different flavor in there. The Pepper X does have its own very unique flavor, very unique experience, pun intended. I'm pretty sure that's why they trademarked it for the level of heat it has, the whole, you know, up and down rather than up, 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 then down slowly or, you know, taper off. It is shoots up. Gets a little mild, then shoots way up, then down, then up, then down, then up and down. It's a roller coaster. I, I really like that. But I'm a little bit masochistic. Just, uh, I'd say a little bit, but I'm masochistic in, in my own ways. Not, Don't need to go into it right now. We, If you want to know, I'll explain another time. But, yeah. So I look forward to seeing you all on Saturday. It'll be fun. I'll probably do it with a 360 camera, which means editing will take more time because, again, the Toe of Satan challenge isn't just put it in your mouth. It is, it's a hard candy cinnamon lollipop. You get, when you put it in your mouth, it has to stay in your mouth. It cannot exit your mouth for, for the whole five minutes. And uh, any video I've seen, uh, the last video I watched was Try. Or no, like Irish people try and they did the Toe of Satan challenge a few years ago. There was a lot of drooling. They were terrified of swallowing the drool that, or, you know, the saliva in their mouth because of everything that was there. But I've also done um, the world's hottest gummy bear. I don't recommend that one. It's, it, it only tastes like pepper extract oil. It's gross. But I've also done the world's hottest uh, chocolate bar which is the same heat level as the Toe of Satan challenge, and I'm pretty sure they use the exact same amount of capsaicin oil, which means overall the whole thing should be tolerable. The difference is that it's in a hard candy rather than a chocolate or a gummy bear. That's where the challenge will be. I look forward to it. But anyway, I'm for those who stuck around this long, thank you. Leave a like. Leave a like. Hit that subscribe button if if you dare if you dare but hit the like hit the subscribe button leave a comment down below if you have any questions or any or anything you wish to get off your chest and we'll see you all tomorrow on friday and i will see everyone on saturday see you around everyone